welcome. But Shelly scared all of us uh, big time last year, shortly after her book launch, when she um, announced that she had ovarian cancer. And it was a rough, rough ride. And I will let her tell you whatever details she wants to share with you about that. But thank the Lord, she is sitting there live and in person and healthy and cancer free and right fan message each other 50 times a day <laughs> i know it's true it's a miracle really it is a miracle and i am i am tearing up here but i me too i'm glad that you're here so no. um w when we were talking about different things that i thought were important to share with people I wanted to uh, I wanted to bring you in because one you just went through this and two it was the timing was crazy I was I don't know if you caught any of the live before this but um, I, I shared with the group that was watching that that you had just launched your book you had all this momentum going yeah and then boom you were down and out and there was nothing you could do and you have come back with such a vigor on you know putting things in place and doing all these things and not letting it stop you and um and you've got some great ideas that we're going to talk about but i'm going to be quiet now and i'm going to let you share your story and what happened and and how you've gotten to where you are today yeah well um gosh you know i'll try not to get emotional but it is an emotional story so that may come um and that's okay but you're, you're exactly right. I had, so last October, it would have been October of 2018, I broke all the rules that Alexa suggests, and you should definitely listen to her when she tells you to build an audience before you launch a book. So I launched my business and my book on the same day, October 1st of 2018, to an audience of like four people. Um, and um, they were like two friends and, you know, two family members or something like that. Right, right. Um, I genuinely believed that if you had a good book, a well-written book, a well-done book on a culturally relevant topic, that it would just sell. Um, people, I knew that people wanted what I knew. I knew that. And I still know that. I knew that my book worked. I still know that. And I just thought, oh, that'll be enough. And my book will just, people will magically hear about my book and they'll just buy it and you know I'll make a hundred thousand dollars a year so that's what I believed and um, when I quickly realized that I reached out to Alexa and I booked like a 30 minute crash marketing course with her and she in 30 minutes she told me everything that was wrong with what I had done which was exactly what I paid her for and um, I I did I probably did what hardly anyone does I literally did everything she told me I, I put into place every single thing she told me to do. Um, and then I hired her to help me reformat the book a little bit, get it onto KDP, get it in print. Um, and then I've hired her a couple of times since then for different marketing um, appointments. Um, and so I was, it was April when I got, so I launched in October, right? I launched on Amazon in maybe like mid January or February. And I then I had just finished my audiobook in March and I was getting ready. I just set up my affiliate program. I was getting ready to set up courses and um, some book clubs and stuff. And in April I was diagnosed with cancer. And it was to say it was devastating was, you know, certainly an understatement for all the reasons all of you could imagine. No one wants a cancer diagnosis. And ovarian cancer diagnosis is you know, it's not a simple one. That's a, that's a hard one to beat. The, um, and maybe, maybe I can share about the signs and symptoms of ovarian cancer to bring awareness sometime to the women. Um, cause it's a silent, it's the number one killer, uh, gynecological killer of women. <clears throat> um, because it's silent until it's almost too late. So it was a devastating diagnosis. And I remember I was laying on the couch and I re all I remember is just being in blackness. Like I remember I was in this dark place. And um, I was talking to a friend of mine and I said, man, I cannot believe that I just got diagnosed because I was having the time of my life. Like I had just, I had been a stay-at-home mom for 17 years and I was, I was ready. I, we had our kids 12 years apart. So I had small children for 17 years. And when my youngest one went to kindergarten, I went to my husband and I said, dude, 
I have got to brush these Cheerios off my cart again. And I got to go do something outside of this home. I've got to go do something that's semi-intelligent, that's semi-driven. This part of me, I mean, I was never going to have children and I had four and I ended up homeschooling them. I was planning on having a career and I put my whole career self aside for 17 years. And when I came out, that drive that you saw that you experienced was because it had been pent up for 17 years and I was having so much fun. Work felt like play to me. And when I got diagnosed, it all stopped. And I, I was saying to a friend, um, I was just having the time of my life. And she said the most powerful words to me that any human has ever spoken to me and probably ever will. She said, well, why don't you keep having the time of your life? <sighs> and it hit me like a ton of bricks. And it, it wasn't flippant. I suppose if you hear that, you might think, oh my gosh, what was she thinking saying something like that? No, I get but it. she knew me. She knows who I am. She knows my mindset. She knows my spirit. She knows my faith. And she said, why don't you keep having the time of your life in a switch flipped? And I was like, oh, okay. I'm not dead yet. So I have a choice. I have a choice how I'm going to fight this, how I'm going to live with this, how I'm going to recover from this, how I'm going to walk through this. And so many people talked to me about how I walked through cancer, that it was one of the most amazing things they ever saw. And I think it was because I made that choice. I made a choice to continue to have the time of my life, even though I was walking through truly the valley of the shadow of death. I was truly walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And um, my cancer journey was not easy. I had several complications that my oncologist, who's the best in the state, had never seen in 25 years of practice. Um, I almost died. <clears throat> One time, I, I um, you know, my heart stopped beating, and they had to resuscitate me. And um, I had several other major complications, and um, it was not an easy road at all. I had a very, very difficult path. And it lasted about nine months. My chemo, I had two surgeries, and... and um, as I was coming out of it, um, I'll talk about while I went through it and how I kept my business afloat in a minute, but I'll just kind of tell this larger timeline and then go back. As I was coming out of it, I had, after my treatment, between the time that I finished my treatment and the time that I was really back on my feet again was a solid month because I got meningitis for the second time after I had my treatment. Um, I got bronchitis that actually literally almost killed me like who dies from bronchitis when you beat ovarian cancer. Um, but it was, it, I just was so compromised that everything was really serious. And so I had about a month on the couch and um, I, I spent that month in massive reflection, massive amounts of prayer, meditation, visualization, um, and soul searching and lots and lots of journaling. And I, because I almost died, um, and because my cancer has an 80% recurrence rate, um, and it has a 71%, no, it's a 69% death rate in five years. Wow. Okay, so every year 21,000 women are, are diagnosed with ovarian cancer, and every year 14,000 die. Oh okay, so those were the numbers that I was faced with in my recovery. And I'm laying there on the couch and I'm dealing with those numbers. I'm wrestling with them, right? I, anyone could die at any moment. This is a reality that we all face. We all ignore it pretty much 24-7. We ignore this reality. We act like we're never going to die. Um, and I made a commitment on that couch. I'm like, I am never going to forget that I'm going to die. Like, I want to remember that I'm going to die. Not, not today, not this year, you know. Because when we are clear that one day we will no longer live on this earth, it gives our life in this very moment perfect clarity. Mm -hmm. And I hold that reality in the front of my mind that if I were to die in five years, would I do this? Would I take this action in my life? Right. Would I take this business action? Would I take these family actions? Would I take these financial choices? 
And when I hold that, that five year plan, not that I plan on dying in five years at all, I'm perfectly healthy. Um, but it has given my life perfect clarity and it has given my business perfect clarity. So when I sat on that couch, basically what I did is I asked myself, when I take my last breath on this earth, what life do I want to die from? Mm. And that changes everything when you ask that question. So now I am set on building a life that I want to die from. Building a family that when I leave, I did, I did my family right. You know, building a marriage that when I leave, I did my marriage right. Building a community, building service, building friendships. And when I had those serious conversations, I know this is so heavy and maybe not at all what you were hoping we would do today, but no, you're right. I had to... I had to ask myself, is dinner for a dollar a business? Does that, is that the kind of life I would want to die from? If I was to die in five years, would I still build dinner for a dollar? Mm -hmm. And so I had to ask that hard question. And I realized, uh, yes, I absolutely would because I completely believe in the mission of dinner for a dollar, which is to help people hit, to help people eat well on a tight budget and a tight schedule. Because we all know eating well is important. And I'm not giving a dinner for a dollar pitch here. I'm talking you through yeah. how I made the choices that I make and why I have so much passion and clarity and why my business is laser focused. Yeah. Because what I do is important. And if I were to die in five years, I would want to spend these last five years doing this. Because eating well is important. We all know this. But we don't do it because we think it's too expensive and it takes too much time. So I'm helping the world be a better place <laughs> by, by working with this message. And so when I came off the couch, um, I, I flew off the freaking couch, Alexa. I did. I, I started work in December. So here we are. This is March, right? Okay. So in November, I got my last treatment. In December, I started very part-time because it was also the holidays and I wanted was really committed and I was still very low on energy. So I made sure that my family got the first part of my energy. And so I eased back into dinner for a dollar in, in December. <laughs> but in January, I had 18 speaking engagements. I know. Okay. So me easing off in December, booked my, I booked myself 18 speaking engagements in January. And start, since January, I have grown my email list so I had about 900 emails when I started in January of 2020. I'm at almost 1,400. So I've almost grown my email list 50% in two months. That's great. And that only happened through complete clarity. I know exactly what my business goals are this year. I know exactly what actions I'm taking. It's a little messy. The action is messy. I am totally a proponent of messy action. As long as you're clear about where you're trying to go, you cannot wait until you're perfect. Um, and anyway, so that's where we're at today. I'm on a 50% growth curve. Um, I had 18 speaking engagements in um, January. I didn't catch your uh, live earlier because I launched a book club uh, this month. <laughs> and um, I'm so excited. I, I was doing my book club in your previous live, I've got um, speaking engagement, a live one this week. Um, so things are, things are exploding. Um, so is that what you wanted to hear? <laughs> exactly what I wanted to hear because it sets the stage for a couple of things. First of all, that is, um, well, you know, we talk a lot about how if you're going to build a business as a writer, or even somebody who's writing that goes to a larger business. Like you have your book, but then you also have your programs that go with it. So you've got right. multiple streams of revenue, and now you're adding in these book clubs, which are so smart. And we're going to talk about how you're doing that, what you're doing with that, because I think it's, a, it's an incredible idea that I think so many people could, um, could jump on with, regardless of genre. But anyway, it sets the stage for like, how important it is, um, one, that if you have these kind of systems and things in place, which is what we talked about a little bit earlier with Joellen, then you have um, 
revenue coming in when you have to be on the couch for eight, a month or eight months. Right. So if, if you had had the opportunity to put some of these things in places, then it would have continued to have poured into your family life. Of course, we don't know if you would have had the, the like drive to do all the things that you have now done. Because I think you do though. I knew you before cancer and you were just as driven, which is why it was yeah. sad to me when you were, you know, taken off the playing field. But, um, but yes, it sets the stage perfectly for, for what we're talking about, which is building that business, um, right. putting the systems in place so that it can continue to work for you and an email list, growing that email list, growing those contacts. That's a huge part of it. And then, you know, different ways of diversifying your income through the stuff you're doing. So let's talk about when you said you um, came out with a passion to get your, get, what was that then? When you decided I'm going to start doing all these lives, what was the, what was the purpose behind the, the, um, sorry, not the lives, the speaking events, but yeah. what, what were they about and, and how did you start that process? Well, I remember you saying to me, um, you know, because we became friends, so we chat more frequently than we did at the very beginning when I hired you and we were just colleagues. Um, so I was messaging you about trying to um, decide if I should um, join a course that was pretty expensive. It was like $2,000 and I was on the fence about it. And you were like, do not buy that course. You said, take that $2,000 and use it to grow your audience because here's the thing. You cannot sell to the same people over and over and over and over. You have to grow your audience. And um, when I went into cancer, I had an audience of about 900, which was pretty good because I started with zero right in October. And so by April, I had gotten it to about 1,000. Wow. And I had a very, very specific and um, clear content marketing plan, which I highly recommend. So not only am I growing my audience, but I'm nurturing that audience through weekly emails. And I had done that up to my cancer. And so even though, um, you know, I had an audience of about a thousand when I got diagnosed and my engagement rate in my Facebook group is like 90, it's over 90%, over 90% of the 1300 people who are in my Facebook group today engage with my content at least once a month, wow. huge engagement rate. So I have a, I have a very engaged audience. Because I'm regularly communicating with them. I'm adding value to them. I'm not selling to them 24-7. You can't have 900 people and want to sell them your book every week. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and so I send them an, a weekly email on a content marketing plan where I'm giving them value, teaching them what they need to know throughout the year. And so when I got sick, I... I um, continued that, but on a reduced rate because I would have periods where I felt decent. And so I used to email four times a month and then I dropped down to once or twice a month. Um, and my email list while I got sick dropped down to about 900 and it stayed there. And so I felt really pleased that I stepped back from my business pretty much for nine months and it, it really virtually maintained. It didn't grow. And I don't think I don't know if there's a way for it to grow when the engine sits out, but if you can at least have it maintain while you're out, I feel like that's a huge victory. Absolutely. Um, and so my goal in 2020 was to take my email list from 900 and, and grow it to 10,000 people this year. Um, and that's my only business goal. Literally, I have one goal, to grow my audience to 10,000. So I sat down and brainstormed. Um, brainstormed with you, another one of my business friends. And then I also booked a coaching call with a general coach and just asked like, okay, what are my ways that I can grow my audience? And I did a ton of reading. Um, Joanna Penn is fantastic um, at this. How do I grow my audience? And I, I wrote down all the ways one could grow an audience. Um, and I settled in on the three or four ways that I'm fantastic at. So my best skills are public speaking um, and connecting with people. Those are my two best skills. And so I decided that I was going to network the crap out of myself, um, adding value everywhere I go. That's my goal. So my goal isn't pitching myself. My goal is adding value everywhere I go. Finding an audience, finding a person, 
that has a need that I can fill, adding value there and growing my audience that way. And so, right yeah. There, I want to pause and I want to repeat what you just said because I'm sorry to interrupt you when you're on a train here. I hope I don't make no. where you were going. <clears throat> but what you just said is fundamental to anybody who's trying to grow readership, whether you're writing a fiction book, a nonfiction book, or a children's book, anything like having value to them so they want to open your emails they want to participate in your group they want to be buying your books they want to be doing that so just wanted to highlight that in case anybody had <coughs> you know gotten busy doing something <laughs> yeah thank you proceed please. yeah it's true and I have what I did in order to map that out in case anyone's curious is I sat down and I thought about my target market mm -hmm. what needs do they have what problems do they have in their life regarding my topic what things are they interested in learning about? And I just jotted those down. I had like a hundred ideas or something like that. And um, it was a big brainstorming session. And then I pulled out a annual calendar and I thought, okay, what happens in the life of my target market on an annual basis? Okay, so my target market is a mom with kids at home. Okay, so what happens in the life of a mom with kids at home? Okay, we have back to school. Um, we have summer breaks. We have, okay, that we have Mother's Day. We have Father's Day. And then I w looked at the calendar and I thought about all the major holidays and food related to major holidays, right? Holidays are pretty much just about food. <laughs> they're either about food or they're about alcohol, right? Okay. So, like, so every holiday naturally had a topic to go with it uh, you know as an example st patrick's day is coming and i found a way to use corned beef in six completely different recipes that totally changed the whole flavor profile of corned beef so that when corned beef goes on sale after st patrick's day you can buy several of them and turn them into other meals that aren't corned beef and cabbage right Topics like that, so that my reader can go and find corned beef on sale and use that for three or four other meals over the next few months. Mm -hmm. And so I, and then I map that out and I have 52 themes and I am going to be Captain Smarty Pants here, Alexa, I never even told you that I'm doing this. I'm keeping those themes fixed and I'm reusing those blogs year after year. Oh, so yeah. I am not rewriting things. So once I get through, because of my cancer, I only had about maybe 60% of my year written out. So now I'm repurposing those. And um, because the same thing happens year round in my, my target market's life. I don't have to keep recreating new content all the time. Yeah. I just need to keep growing my audience. And so, and then nurturing them and adding the value to them along the way. So that's why I booked the 18 speaking engagements. I actually wasn't paid for any of them. However, they all have led to the wildest of things. Just from one month of effort, out of that has come some crazy stuff. And I'm actually not even pitching any speaking engagements right now because I am getting a 100% yes rate, Alexa. 100% of the people I pitch want to have me come, which is crazy. So I'm not pitching anyone right now because I don't have time because I have I built some collaborations that I'm super excited about and I'm, I'm focusing there right now. So I'm not sure if I answered any question that you asked. <laughs> um, I think, you know, it's, it's really great. I think that people, we are, we are all seeking relationships and deeper, like <laughs> we don't, like you said, you don't want to just be sold to all the time. Like you want something more, Building this, this, this is one of the biggest reasons why building an email list is so important because keeping up those relationships, building that know, like, and trust factor. And it doesn't matter. Um, Shayla Raquel um, is on in a, on for Thursday, I believe, and she's talking about building the email list as well. And like, you can do this across all genres. There are always ways that you can find ways to be relevant. If you're writing fantasy, you can, you, there are thousands of ways that you'll hear throughout this week on how you can be that relevance factor for them. But when it comes down to the next time you launch a book or an ebook or a, a program or anything, like now you've got a list of 
10,000 people, because that's what we're getting to at the end of the year, who that's right. have been receiving valuable content from you. And it's a no brainer. They're like, of course I want her book. Look at what she's been giving me all year long. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So you've gone, you were doing these, um, you were doing these lives and getting, yeah. Speaking. So what were you doing with that? Then were you, yeah, talk to me a little bit about for, for other people to kind of get an idea of how they can do this. How did you build a program around your book? A program meaning which part the book club you mean, or you mean when you, when you went in to do these lives? Oh, okay. So I created two signature talks. Um, that are based on what I know the need is. So one of the talks is um, four steps you can take right now to reduce your food bill. And then the other talk is how I get dinner on the table in 15 minutes, Monday through Friday. Okay. So when I reached out to somebody who had an audience that matched mine, so I looked for people who had an audience that matches my audience, but is in a different industry. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to budget grocery moms and want and pitching them, right? But I'm going to similar audiences who have a different niche. So for instance, for me, I go to um, budget moms. So frugal moms or business coach moms or budget coach moms or Dave Ramsey moms, you know, those types of people. Um, I am going to physicians. I actually spoke at a, a Phoenix Children's Hospital to talk to the doctors, nurses, dietitians, and parents about how parents can afford an allergy-free diet for their kids. Mm -hmm. um, so I have the medical community, and then I have the food allergy community. Um, I have the general mom community who needs to get dinner on the table every night and feel like we're going to stab ourselves in the eyes because everybody has to eat all the time. Um, and then I have like the health and fitness. So, um, specialty groups like autoimmune protocol diets, keto diets, um, or even just fitness groups. So I targeted the types of groups that have my audience in them, but are a different niche. And I just went to them and I said, Hey, I'm Shelly with dinner for a dollar. And I have an elevator pitch that I give. I say, I'm Shelly with dinner for a dollar. I teach moms how I feed my family a simple allergy friendly whole food diet for $1 per person per meal. And I do it in 15 minutes, Monday through Friday. I think your audience would want to hear my message. I give two signature talks and then I tell them my signature talks and I say, would you be interested in having me come in and teach that? That's it. That's my pitch. So and I accidentally got a hundred percent yeses and overbooked myself for January. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's beautiful because you've said so many things here that I really want people, pull out your conference notebook, pull out your notebook, whatever, and write these things down. It starts with knowing your audience. It starts with knowing who your reader is. And you must, 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 if you want to spend a lot of books, to get on my pedestal here, you must know and understand the person who wants, needs, and will read your book. If you're writing a book just for you because it's the book you've always wanted to write and you want, you know, it's your passion or whatever, awesome. But you have to understand that you might also only be, be, be the only person who wants that book. Right. <laughs> it's a tough love there. Um, but you know your audience first and foremost. You have a good product. You tested your product. Right. Um, you, you know, you're getting feedback. You run a group about the things in going in your book so you know it's a good product feedback, all of that kind of stuff. And then you were very easily allow, uh, able to, to think outside the box. You just named four major audiences that have, are, com are totally different. They are. A children's hospital versus a workout group versus, you know, moms on a budget, but they have the same core audience. By the way, if anybody in this group is interested, because I totally am interested in, um, in her signature talk after listening to that, I would love to know how to put dinner on in 15 minutes. Let me know in the comments because um, I'm thinking of we, we've been, Shelly and I've been brainstorming about things like this is a group of a lot of women who could potentially busy women who are trying right. to pull all the things going on and might want some of this um, information as well. So anyway, 
Let's move into the next part then, because I think that the next part is really cool. As you started doing these interviews, and I know a lot of this stuff, because like I said at the beginning, we, um, we message each other like 50 times a day. <laughs> we bounce ideas off of each other all the time. Um, we have crazy ideas. Oh my gosh. We, we, and <laughs> many of them will never see the light of day, but they are really fun to talk about. <laughs> But, but as we were doing that, as you were doing your presentations, as you were getting feedback, as you were seeing all of this, as you were bouncing crazy ideas, you developed this book club idea, which this is what I want everybody to hear about because this is so incredible. I really should make her charge you to hear this idea. <laughs> <laughs> right? But tell, tell them about the, uh, the book club idea and what you're doing with that now. Oh yeah. So let me, can I backpedal just a little before I get to book club? Okay. So in this month of January, when I gave all those talks, right. And some of them felt like I was talking to a wall. I totally learned how to test out an audience before I say yes, so that I could learn which ones I should go into and which ones I shouldn't. Um, and it felt like many of the talks didn't yield any quote results, right? So my goal for the year, if you remember, is to grow my email list. So I was, at the beginning, I was measuring everything by, did that action create growth in my email list, right? I'm testing my actions and seeing what's creating the results that I want. It's really hard to tell that all the time because sometimes these actions that we take, what ended up happening through that blitz that I did is I ended up establishing myself as an expert in my field, in the online space. And now when people want someone to talk about how to get dinner on the table for busy moms, they think of me because I have positioned myself as an expert. So those 18 talks that maybe didn't even yield any sales or maybe they yielded some, um, they established me as an expert, which laid the groundwork for me to be able to take some actions that I wouldn't have been able to take before. And through that, I've made some really powerful connections and I've come to understand what affiliate marketing really is. Uh -huh. And I'm going to talk about this because it, and it's almost embarrassing to talk about it. It's so basic and obvious, but I swear I didn't know it two months ago and I'm, I'm moderately intelligent and pretty good at business. So if I didn't understand it at all, I'm going to guess that some other people didn't either. So I thought affiliate was like, I come to you and I say, hey, I've got this book. You pitch it to your audience and, you know, I'll give you 30%, right? Or like you like a certain coffee and you put it on your thing and people buy it and you get a percentage, okay? So I saw it as this really like fly in the pan or flash in a pan, <laughs> fly in a pan, <laughs> flash in a pan, like drive by shooting, like that, that's a terrible analogy. I'm sorry. Not a drive-by shooting. Just like a drive-by, drive-through approach. Right. I, I'm going to stop a moment and apologize for just saying that. Drive-by shooting is really serious and I'm not. So anyway. Cool? So a flat, yeah. <laughs> a flash in the pan marketing, just sales. And here's what I have come to understand. If you want to approach affiliate marketing, this is what you need. And I swear, if you don't learn anything else from me, please learn this because it's crazy. If you, you need to find another business owner who has a need in her audience that she does not want to fill or cannot fill. And then the audience needs to have that need. So this lady, this gal, this other business, and I say lady because I only work with women, not intentionally, just my audience is women and so the business owners are women. So I need to find a lady who has a need in her business that she can't fill, whose audience has a need that isn't getting filled, that I can fill. And together, this makes a perfect triangle. And by me coming into her audience, I help her make more money because I'm filling a need in her audience. When you can find that sweet spot, your affiliate program will blow up. When you just have people who are going to sell your product on their site, I can tell you right now, no one's going to listen to that. Right. No one listens to sales. They only listen to a need being filled in their life. And so if you want to affiliate, you've got to find those partnerships, collaborations 
where you're the three, where the three parts of you are more powerful than she was before you joined her team or her, you know, her yeah. project. And so I found a gal, I found actually two really powerful partnerships that I'm working with right now. One of them is a community where the women want to lose more than 150 pounds. And for those women, um, I am helping them hit their food goals on a tight budget and a tight schedule. I'm not a nutritionist, so I'm not teaching them how to eat. Right. I'm trusting that they're going to learn how to eat wherever they want. I'm helping them eat the way they want to eat on a tight budget and a tight schedule. And she's brought me in to be in the membership community. So that's a monthly ongoing membership on someone else's platform. She has 100,000 people in her audience. <laughs> and because I'm stepping in, more people will say yes to her membership because I'm providing a tool in that community to help them hit their goal of losing more than 150 pounds. Okay. So what I'm doing in that community is I'm putting my book in the whole platform, giving it away for free. And then I'm coming in every month and teaching one step out of the book over the course of a year. I'll cover, you know, my entire book because they're focused on other things. They're also focused on their mindset you know, overcoming the, the baggage that they have in their mind of being overweight. And now, and then they're also working on um, movement, uh, exercise. So the food is just one third of what they're doing. I came into her audience, met a need she had, met a need her audience had. And because I joined her, her offer became more powerful and she'll make more money. I mean, it's, it's incredible. And there's so many ways that you can brainstorm on this to see how this could work. I mean, I absolutely I start looking for people who have an active audience of people who want to write a book for whatever reason and doing a book club with that, you know, there's so it's such yep. a great idea. And the opportunity came to you because you put yourself out there. I did your audience because you narrowed down your topics of where you wanted to be the expert because you put yourself out there and then it, it has resulted in this. And I think that's really important too, that you have to learn how to promote yourself. And if you're trying to be, become a successful author or a successful yep. business owner, and it doesn't have to be dirty. What we nope. described is I'd be more than thrilled, you know, to, to have the gap filled for a knowledge. Like you said, it's value as a business owner. People are always looking for value. They're right. always looking for those things. So that's great. Um, yeah. And so then the other offer that I, that I ended up working and negotiating is with a gal who is, she has an audience of about 13,000 and she is a, um, she helps women declutter and simplify their motherhood. So declutter their homes and simplify their expectations and their roles so that they aren't so stressed as a mom. I think I need to and that. she, the number one question that people ask her other than about decluttering is about food. Uh -huh. is she hates talking about food. Perfect. And she, um, it, how I found her is, she posted in Boss Moms group, hey, I want to start some affiliate programs. You know, here's who I am. Here's my audience. Um, tell me who you got. Well, every single person who answered her was pitching an MLM, which I'm not against MLMs, but that isn't what she was looking for. And she even said she wasn't. And so when I pitched myself, I was offering her what she actually wanted. And then I took the extra step and I messaged her and sent her about five affiliates that I thought were the, the right affiliate for her and her audience. And I knew who they were because we have the same audience. Right. And I know, so I didn't have to work at that because I know who my future, who I want my future affiliates to be when my audience is at the right size. And so then I pitched her my idea. She went to my site, downloaded my free chapter. My opt-in is a free chapter out of my book. She messaged me one hour later, said, I love you. I've been looking for you for a year and a half. You're exactly what I teach, except I hate teaching it. Please join me. She said, what can we do together? We booked a call the next morning. And within 48 hours, we had a contract. <laughs> and we're doing a book club together. And so I'm actually hosting the book club, running it through my site. She's just telling her audience about it. So she has her own affiliate code. 
I'm sharing 50% with her um, and with a couple of my other people who are affiliates. Um, and what we are doing is we're taking my book. We set up a pop-up Facebook group, a temporary one for 30 days. And we're taking 21 days and walking through the book. I'm doing live six days a week. Wow. In hindsight, I will re I will adapt that next time. <laughs> that's, a um, that's a lot. So what I'm doing is I'm doing 12 lives where I teach the 11 steps from my book, and then I'm doing six Q and A sessions. And in that book club, they have full access to me. They get my ebook and workbook, and they're getting my brand new book, which isn't even out, which is Dinner in 15 Minutes, which you were one of my beta readers. Yeah. Um, and what I'm going to do, Alexa, because you and I talked about this so that you, this gives you time to hear about it, is um, I didn't get time to build the full 30-day program around the dinner in 15 minutes. So what I'm offering is the dinner in 15 minutes for a seven-day program. And then in the book club, I will help them build their 30-day 30 30 day program built, um, built on the 15-minute program that I've set up. So their 30-day meal plan. So that's what they're getting for $39. Um, that's the ticket that I'm charging. My, my ebook is 10 just for price reference um, in case you're thinking about hosting a book club. Last year, right before I got cancer, I hosted a book club. Um, I, I ran it for free in my own audience as a beta tester to see how that worked. Mm -hmm. um, and my intention was to use those videos from the beta test to create an evergreen course um, but then I got cancer and we set all that on hold. Plus all my videos were an hour long. And for the most part, people don't want to hear hour long videos. And here we are giving an hour long webinar, but, um, or an hour long interview. But, um, so this time around, I'm getting, going to try to get them down to 15 minutes. Um, and then I'm going to use those videos to create an evergreen course. So my book will be in an evergreen course. And then I'm thinking two to three times a year, I'll open it up like this for a live book club where they have the interaction of a Facebook group and the accountability. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure you know this, change is super hard. It's against our nature. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in, in general, we don't change. Um, that's the facts. And um, scientists have shown us that we greatly increase our chances of success if we join a like-minded group mm -hmm. and we share our goals and we hold ourselves accountable. And so two to three times a year, I plan to hope, open it up to a live one and probably I'll charge more next time for the live one. And then the evergreen one, I might leave it like maybe 29 or something like that. So that's kind of my marketing plan. With it. The wheels in my head are just a turning <laughs> all the things that can be done. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I think it's a model that anyone can use. And this is what you and I have been freaking out over. Like this is a, this is a good model, and I think that many authors could use it to grow their platforms, position themselves as an expert, make some money on the side, and once I turn this into an evergreen platform, then it's something that's running year-round, and so, you know, if something happens in my life, or I want to take the summer off, or, you know, I've got something that is, um, you know, bringing in money year-round year without direct effort. Yeah. That's the goal. That is definitely the goal. And it's right. You know, I often think about where I would be if I had just stayed focused. I think one of the smartest things that you did was, I mean, there's a million things you could be doing. You could be doing, uh, I mean, groups to, I mean, just all over the place. You could be all over the place, but you like focused down. You found those, those two key things that you wanted to get on. And I often wonder where I, where I would be if I had focused instead of trying to run uh, four businesses and a nonprofit, <laughs> but that's a different, different conversation, a different day. Would well, you, I learned from you because you told me do not create any more products, grow your audience. And I, I listened. Um, and I do have several other, I mean, I really want to write some books about overcoming. Yeah. Um, I have a fantastic book in my mind. Um, Cancer, the greatest gift you never wanted, and talking about the blessings of struggle um, and the gifts it gives you. Um, 
But I'm, I told myself I have to wait at least a year because I never got to build my audience. I mean, I literally launched and then I got cancer. Yeah. So I really believe I do have to stay laser focused this year for all of 2020. You are only going to hear me talk about two things, four ways to save money on your groceries right now and putting dinner on the table in 15 minutes. And, you know, maybe I'll create two slight brands, dinner for a dollar and dinner in 15 minutes so that I'm hitting two different people because we've talked about this. There are people who are interested in the time component who do not care one spit about whether they save money on their groceries. Right. Um, and from a marketing standpoint, people pay to save time. They don't pay to save money. Yeah. Um, so I'm learning this. So I'm, I've pivoted, pivoted my message a little bit into the time message. And, and you all will learn that too as you're, you'll see what people are responding to as you put yourself out there. And you do those free talks and you'll, you'll see what people are latching onto that you say. And you're like, oh, that's my superhero status. My superhero status is, you know, dinner for a dollar and dinner in 15 minutes. That's my superpower. Mm -hmm. And so why am I going to talk about anything else? You know, like, and I had heard Dana give a talk one time about how to grow a seven figure business. And she said, everybody wants to keep creating new things to sell to the same audience. But the, the secret to a seven figure business is teaching the same thing to a new audience. Yeah. And between her saying that and you saying that, I thought, okay, I've got to, I got to stay laser focused, crystal clear. Yeah. And I got to keep doing it. Like yeah. you, you can't, I can't stop because I get bored with my message, right? How many times do I want to say, teach dinner in 15 minutes. Well, that's a powerful concept that will change people's lives. You can eat better if I teach you how to put dinner on the table in 15 minutes. That's, that's a good point too. Right. Um, and that's a value that I'm adding people. And so I got to remember that. How many people in this group want to hear one of those messages? We, will, <laughs> we will, I know that I know a lot of moms who would love right. to have that. Well, yeah. And I promise I'm, I'm really not trying to promo or pitch myself here. I'm yeah. trying to teach how I came to where I'm at and being, you, you talked about a laser focus and how important that is. And I'm also going to throw in a crystal clear marketing message. Not only do you need to know where you're trying to go, but you've got to know it and who your audience is. You've got to know who you are and what you have to offer. Yeah. So I'm Shelly with dinner for a dollar and I can offer you dinner for a dollar and dinner in 15 minutes. Well, that's a powerful message. People, because it's, those are relevant topics and it perks people's ears. They listen right in. Of course they want to learn how to do that. Right. And you have, you have one of those things too, whatever that is, you have your little sound bite that will grab people. We have a couple of questions here that I want to get to before we, yeah. And this, and it's funny because you just were talking again about how important it is to get in front of your audience. So Tony wants to know, how did you, how do you find your audience? Do you have any tips uh, uh, for helping people figure out who that specific audience is? Um, well, I took this course early on when I was, um, I took two courses that really helped me very early on, like before I even built my website or even knew my the name of my brand or the name of my book. Um, I took a course by who is, by a gal who is now my social media manager. Um, her name's Angela. It was $49. And it was, it's a six hour marketing course that at the beginning, I didn't even know what SEO was, or I didn't even know how to spell niche or say niche, certainly, um, or what it was. I didn't know what a target market was. I didn't know what content marketing was. I didn't know anything. I took her six hour marketing course and I took it over a four day weekend. And by the end I had, I had my elevator pitch. I had my business name. I had my target market. I had my hundred con my hundred blog topics. I had, I knew exactly what my content marketing strategy was. Um, and I dialed in over that four day weekend on who my target audience was by taking that course. And I can send you a link to that if that would be helpful. Um, it's really good for an introductory business owner. If you've been in a long time and you, you, you understand how to do all that, it'll, it'll, you know, 
I don't know that it would be for that, but if you're an introductory or slightly introductory, it's powerful. It's very, very plain. It's literally six hours of straight audio. <laughs> um, and I tell her at least once a month that she needs to charge like a thousand dollars for that course because it is super powerful. And then I took a course from you that was super powerful. It was your, I don't know if you still offer it, your marketing, how to market your book. <laughs> I Crazy did. good class, crazy good course. Um, I bought it one time when you ran a sale and um, Angela Ford was in there and Joanna Penn um, and you and it, it, that class super helped me. And though, I, I don't know when I bought it, I don't, I don't want to quote prices cause I don't know if you still offer it and I don't know how much you charge for it. it but I remember it being inexpensive. Yeah. Maybe 49 or 27 or I think it was 47 at the time. It's 67 now, but uh, it's a discount. People in this group get a discount on our courses. So, so that course is incredible. Um, the two courses together. And then I also got a book from Joanna Penn. Um, I don't even remember something along the lines of how to market your book or something. She offers several. I don't even remember which one I picked. Between those three resources, I was able to really dial in on who my audience was. And I was really able to dial in on my marketing message. Well, great. Um, then we have another. And thank you. I, I swear to y'all, I did not tell Shelly to spend time talking about things that I have done for her. <laughs> The courses she's taken. It's just, oh, I apparently helped her a lot. <laughs> you really did. Your your consults and, and really, truly, uh, your one on one consults are not so effective. Um, and I, I mean, I in one hour, I can't even tell you what I accomplished with Alexa. In fact, that was actually what made me hire you because your thirty minute introductory consult that you offer one time only. We got so much done in that 30 minutes. You probably thought I was crazy when I talked because I was like, I literally had all these questions and she wouldn't hardly breathe. And then I just insert my next one. I'm like, we, we're not here to be friends, girl. We're getting crap done. And uh, we, we blasted through that. And I thought that woman knows her stuff. And then I just hired you for everything from then on because anyway. Um, okay. That, and then there's another question about once you were started building your audience, did you ever pull your audience to see what people wanted? I never have. Oh. I haven't not one time. Um, because I, I'm there all the time. I know what they want. Okay. Like, well, there you go. I mean, I'm in there and also I am them. I am my target market also. Okay. And so before I wrote dinner for a dollar, we had lived with that diet for 10 years, okay? Five years of it, I never paid attention to money. I was just eating whole food, allergy-friendly, produce-rich, and our bill was astronomical. We ran into some financial challenges, which forced me to cut our food bill in half. Um, but I still needed to eat the same way. So then I created my own dinner for a dollar system, which I never intended on sharing with the world. I was just solving a problem I had as a mom. We lived like that for five years, okay? So for, for 10 years, I was an allergy mom. For five of that, I was a frugal allergy mom boss. And in that time, I made friends with people who were that way. Like I know my audience in and out because I am them. My friends are them. My Facebook friends are them. Um, I'm pretty sure I use really bad grammar all through that, but I think you got my point. <laughs> I live with my audience, essentially. Yeah, that's awesome. And somebody else asked, I forgot, it's already slipped through, but I remember the question popping up. Um, when you started doing, I know you have done some speak, some paid speaking engagements, right? Yep. I wanted to know whether you were doing paid or free, and if you travel, who covers your expenses and things like that. So um, I use a gal called named Carrie Sharp to get all of my speaking um, information from. So anytime I have a speaking thing, she has a great Facebook group. She'll answer any of your questions in there. I can't remember. He says, she says, or something yeah, that, like that. That is what it is. Okay. And um, she also offers some consults. So I'm not an expert on this, but um, what I learned from her is you have to take a look at the entire event. Okay, and what it has to offer you financially or otherwise. 
keeping in mind that sometimes you're not going to make any money, but it may grow your audience or it may position you as an expert. For instance, when I spoke at Phoenix Children's Hospital, I did not get paid for that event. I was able to sell my books in the back. I sold enough books for sure to cover my time. But now I can put Phoenix Children's Hospital on my speaker sheet. How powerful is that? They're like one of the top 10 hospitals in the country. Okay, so I can use that at, to position myself as an expert. So right now, I'm in a position this year where I'm growing myself as an expert. I mean, I'm positioning myself as an expert and I'm growing my audience. Those are my two goals for my business this year. I did not set an income goal for my business this year. And I know that sounds crazy, but I didn't. And so for me, I am getting paid for my speaking gigs or I'm selling books in the back. And that usually covers that more than covers my expenses. It also is more than covering my time. Um, but it's not super profitable for me yet in right. the way that it is once you're really a professional speaker. And I definitely, I have already elevated all of my standards um, in just a couple months time. Um, I now no longer speak to any audiences less than a thousand people um, online with a, and only in very engaged audiences. Um, and then I only speak to groups that are, you know, a hundred or more people because, uh, 60% of the audience in person buys my book. My conversion is 60%. Wow. Um, and 80% join my email list. Wow. That's how powerful public speaking is. The conversion rates are off the charts. You, there's nothing I can do. In January, I did those 18 speaking gigs, and I had, uh, I had two live speaking gigs. One of them was for a friend, very small, five or six people. I did it for a friend. The other one was about 150 people. I sold more and got more email addresses in that one live public speaking engagement than I did in my entire month with everything else that I did. Wow. So public speaking is ridiculously powerful if you're in the right room with the right message and the right product. Right. And you know how to be a public speaker. Right. I love public speaking. It energizes me. Literally, I, it feels like I am on drugs. I, it is the biggest high like in the entire universe for me. I absolutely love it. And so anyway, what Carrie taught me is you take a look at the whole picture. What does this speaking engagement offer you? Either as a paid event to sell your books in the back or possibly like Phoenix Children's, putting that on your name or maybe growing yourself as an expert. Um, and then you set your rate based on that. If you're going into a super small room, like this week I'm doing a live public speaking event, there's only six people going to be there. <laughs> so I made them pay me. Um, because I, I'm not going to make enough from selling to six people to cover my time. It is a nonprofit, um, a group called Mops, and I am working to actually grow myself as an expert in the Mops community. I'd like to become nationwide known in the Mops community because they're, um, uh, the, the women buy 17 books a year on average, that audience. <laughs> These are good things to know about your audience when you go. This in. is very important. You need to research the audience that you're in and see, are these the people that I want to be in? Okay. They're women with children at home and they buy 17 books a year. And the last live engagement that I did was in January, 150 people to a MOPS group. I asked them to raise their hand of how many people self-identify as people who want to feed their family healthy food. 100% of the people raised their hands. Yeah. Okay. So MOPS is a target market for me. So this week I'm speaking to them, even though there's only six people and they're only paying me a hundred dollars, but I'm trying to position myself. I'm trying to get as many positive reviews as I can in the MOPS community so I can speak at their national conference. Yeah. So that's giving, right? When I'm looking at the circle, what is this event giving me? It's giving me $100, which will cover my basic expenses. It's not going to grow my audience at all, but it's going to position me as an expert in, an, in any network that I want to be involved in. So it offers me something. So 
you have to kind of look at the big picture when you're looking at speaking fees. Um, if that answered, that yeah. was a very roundabout answer to that question. Yeah, that was a great answer. And you know, I am definitely a proponent for doing free first. There are some people, and by the way, make sure y'all check out Sasha Simmons um, presentation and also the presentation with um, Catherine Ferris. Both of them also talk about speaking and, and finding speaking gigs and different things that you can do to do that. Um, but you know, for me, there's a lot of value to doing free for a couple of reasons. One, in that time frame, well, first of all, everybody has to do do the work, you know, to be the expert. Yep. Very few do just get called out to do ten thousand dollars speaking engagement. Nope. Because, you know, you, so you have to, just like you don't start out the CEO of an organization, unless you start your own organization, then I just have right. a CEO, CEO, but you know, in, a, <laughs> in, the, right. in, the, in the other world, you know, um, you, you grow your way up. But secondly, Lordy, does it take some practice? It does. I have no idea how you're going to respond when you get in front of, I'm behind a camera here in the right. corner of my own home and I still get caught up sometimes or, you know, right. whatever. So, but every time it's easier and easier. You know what it does. And I, I forgot to mention that that was one of the benefits of the 18 that I did in January. Mm -hmm. By the end of the month, I had honed in on my two um, signature talks so well, I could give them without notes now. Yes. And that is the advantage, exactly what you're saying. You have to practice. You, you're, you are not, and even me, now I'm a pretty good public speaker. I'd say I'm maybe an 8 out of 10. But they don't pay you $10,000 to be an 8 out of 10. You know, I've got to hone my way to 10. i got to be a 10 out of 10 to get paid $10,000 to speak. Yeah. Um, so, it, so my goal with public speaking is just to make sure I'm not losing money when I do it right now because I'm still growing my audience and positioning myself as an expert. And if I can make some, then that's a bonus. But yeah. I, I am making money every time I speak now. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And you should, you're, you're delivering something that literally saves people thousands of dollars right. over the course of a year. And how, how can you ever put a value on how much time, you know, the time right. making and preparing dinner, um, yeah, I mean, so it's a super valuable thing. And you mentioned something earlier that I just wanted to recap again as well, and that is uh, on this topic of figuring out who your audience is, it's who has the pain points. And right. I really mentioned this, she didn't use the word pain points specifically, but who has the pain points that your product, your book, your course, whatever, solves? It right. solves time and expense of food and eating healthy. So yep. that's how you find your audience. You look for the people who want that. I My pain point is people that want to write a book and don't know where to start. That's like one of my biggest vacuums that I can fill is how do you start? Where do you start? So that's my target audience is women who want to write and publish a book and need to know where to start or how to launch their book or how to grow their target audience. You can have different areas um, of that same if it covers a spectrum like that. And then um, the question is asked, if you're not a public speaker and you're not comfortable, what's the next step to connect? So we've been talking largely about how you've been growing through speaking, but it doesn't right. always have to be speaking. No, it doesn't. And, um, you know, it's funny because um, when I wrote out my list of, you know, 10 or 20 ways that I could grow my audience, um, I so quickly went to things that were public speaking related because I love, I right. love that. Um, and I love networking. Like I really enjoy networking, not in the sleazy way, but in the genuine way where we're solving each other's, helping each other solve each other's problems. So I can't even remember what else was on my list. Um, well, Facebook ads are killer at growing your audience. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I still use Facebook ads. That's actually my third thing. I use networking, public speaking, and Facebook ads. Um, and in content marketing, I'm always running that. Yeah. Always. Um, that's my foundation of my business. So Facebook ads are crazy effective. I kid you not. Every Facebook ad that I run does exactly what I tell it to. <laughs> uh, they are ridiculously effective. I get uh, my conversion for an email address. I converted about 75 cents per email address off of my Facebook ads, which is a good price. It, 
If you're not familiar with conversion, to get an email address for less than a dollar a person is incredible. Yeah, we were over the moon with a dollar eight for our Facebook ads for this conference. A dollar eight. Yes. So and a dollar eight is fantastic. A dollar eight is is fantastic. Um, and so Facebook ads are super effective. And I and you know people will say things like they're only effective if you can spend ten thousand dollars. Bull crap. That's a lie. That's not true. I, my budget, depending on what I'm doing, is about $100 a month. And for that, I get about 125 email addresses a month. Um, what I have learned is that Facebook rewards activity. Mm. Holy heck, this is true. <laughs> so when I am active on my business page, which gets zero engagement, no one pays attention to my business page. But when I'm active on my business page, Facebook, I don't, so this is just an N of one, okay? So I don't know if this is actually true for everyone, but it's been 100% true for me. When I'm active on my business page, Facebook shows my, biz, my group way more. Huh. And the more lives I do on my business page, the more lives I do in my business group, the more people are finding me on Facebook randomly. So I don't run ads for my group anymore. I used to run a dual ad. So I would, this is a great, I don't know if anyone's talking about ads this week, but um, you really want to test your ads. So you run two different ads at the same time and you find out which one's yielding results and then you compare them. Then when you find the one that's yielding more results, then you run with that and then you tweak it. You run it with different audience ages. For instance, um, I have been shocked that my number one audience is um, over 55. Oh, that is I never imagined this. And, you know, it's another top why that possibly is. And so I, um, I increased my Facebook ad to... I had capped it at 55. No, up to 65. I increased my Facebook ad to add the 65 and up. Okay? It was the only change we made. All of a sudden, I'm not converting any emails at all whatsoever. Like zero, zero emails from my ad. And I remember that I had increased it to 65 and up. Well, the 65 and up were watching my ads. They were engaging with my ad, but they were not signing up for my emails. Right. So I went back in and I put it back. It capped it at 65 and my email rate went right back up. So I experimented. It, it showed me that 65 and up is interested in my product, but they won't sign up for my email list. Yeah. They won't leave the Facebook platform or whatever. So anyway... Facebook ads, you can, um, you dial them in by different, you can choose your target audience, their age, their gender. Um, there's all different ways you can dial your thing. You're, you're dialing your message. You're dialing the actual copy, the images, video. Video works about sevenfold over images. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we get a seven times relate. You can turn into a video. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be a video, but videos are super hot. Um, they it, are way more. I don't. And I paid. I paid to. I paid to create a trailer for my book. Mm -hmm. um, I have a good friend who runs a video production company. And he gave me a really good price. So um, that's unfair to state what I what I paid. The market value for my video, he said, was about five hundred dollars. That I've been running that for 14 months. Wow. That's my that's my ad, and it it converts at 75 cents. Wow! It, it's crazy. So you've got to find what works. You've got to experiment. You've got to watch your numbers, and then you tweak and you learn. But Facebook ads are very effective. And one thing I added is when people join my group, I allow them when they request to join my group, I allow them to opt in if they want to for my free email for my free chapter from my book. That's my opt-in. And they, they leave their email address 80% of the time, Alexa. Yeah. So I, that's why I stopped running ads for my group. And yeah. now I just run my ads and now they leave their email address and I'm growing my, I'm double dipping. But I'm just going to go back to this entire thing. And that is that Facebook ads work. If you know your audience and if you're right writing something of value.
Right. You can't just go put your book link to Amazon no. and throw up a Oh my gosh. No, no, no. So no one, yeah. yeah, no one will buy from that. That is absolutely a fact. We don't do, we don't do our ads as a selling. We don't do ads for selling. We do ads to get them on the email list or get them to join the group. And I always give my a free chapter from my book because I'm a brand new author. Yeah. No one knows if they like me. Exactly. Like, so they've got to see part of who I am. They've got to see a lot of who I am. Ooh. Oh my gosh. People want to know everything. What's in your pantry? Like, why do you want to know what's in my pantry? They want to know what's in my pantry. So I got to show them what's for dinner. Oh, all right. I'll show you what's for dinner. They want to know. They do. They do. It's funny. Um, if anybody's uh, <clears throat> totally lost on Facebook ads and this is something in area, I will tell you that um, as we start talking about the launch of the WIP school, Facebook ads are an entire module of that, showing you how to set them up, showing how to get the right audience, showing how to set up the things that we were just talking about. So, um, but actually, I just it just dawned on me that nobody is talking about Facebook ads uh, in this conference. So I'm glad we went there on that for a little while. Um, yeah, they're really they're really effective. But you're right, they aren't randomly effective. They're only effective if you're clear on who you are and you're clear on who they are and you're also giving them something really good that they want yeah absolutely okay well we went in a whole like you gave us so much more value than i ever even <laughs> expected today like i think we more than covered i mean to wrap it all up like there's a lot of things that you can do that you can build in your business so that when life happens you can take a step back if you need to i mean if you'd had all of these things in place imagine like it would have been a, a completely different, well, financial picture for yeah, you. Yeah, right. It would have. Um, and, and putting the things in place so that you can continue to grow that email list and do the things um, no matter what happens in your life. Definitely. So, thank you so much. And, I, and don't give up. Like, and just because something didn't work. So when I launched in October, of course, that wasn't effective uh, because – a, I didn't have an audience. Um, B, my book was priced wrong. And so I went to Alexa. She helped me. C, it wasn't on it wasn't on Amazon. D, it wasn't in paperback. She's like, girl, come on. Like, you've got to do these things. So I went and I did them, and that created growth. Then I still didn't have what I wanted. I went back to Alexa, and then she told me some more things, and I added them in. And when I got cancer, I didn't, I didn't give up. I did stop and pause and ask myself, is this what I want to do with, you know, cause I was given the blessing of a second chance at life. Like, is this what I want to do with round two? It is okay. And then I met with people and I, I booked coaching sessions and I learned and I adapted. I take my numbers very seriously. I check them, but I only work about 16 hours, 20 hours a week. And that's part of my anti-cancer commitment. Like I'm, I'm not going to work myself to death. I love what I do, but I love my health and I love my family. And Alexa will testify to this because I'm always messaging her. How are you doing? Are you walking? Are you eating? Are you drinking? Like we can't ignore our body right. in order to build success because that is short lived because we are going to be tired. We're going to be cranky. We're not going to have energy. Our joints are going to hurt, you know, and so we got to take care of ourselves and Part of that is meeting with friends and not working all the time. And so don't give up if life hits hard. Don't yeah. give up if your launch fails. It, it will. You know, I, so I posted that someone had said, like, I hope I don't mess up my launch today. And I'm like, well, I'm not speaking for women in publishing, but you're going to mess up your launch. <laughs> you know, you are, but you can't break it. I said, you can't break it. It's not broken. It just happens, y'all. I said, yeah today to almost 8,000 people with the link that wasn't working. Not by right. mistake, actually. This was, we actually had the right link in there. Sometimes uh, things you just, it's mercury and retrograde. Sometimes things just don't, I, don't, I still can't, nope. I still can't figure out what happened. I have no idea. We refreshed the page and it worked. So I don't, who knows? Anyway, but you know what? You never get anywhere if you don't try. Um, no, nope. yes, Mar Maritza. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. We will we will um, share the link. Shelly's going to email the link to the marketing course that she took after this. Um, and yes, we did really get into audience affiliate and ads because Shelly always brings more than than um, 
than I expected of her. So that was great. Lots of really good information. And um, I posted the link to her website as well. It's dinner for a dollar. I think we may need to have Shelly come back in and, um, and give us one of her seminars so that we can, because I know it's truly, I mean, this has nothing to do with publishing. Well, it does. Like I'm working so hard to do all the things yeah. that I want to do to grow my business and to write books and to do all these things that, but I still, we have food allergies. I can't have gluten, corn or soy, and I'm not supposed to have dairy. That's really hard. And to figure yeah. that out and do it in 15 minutes a day and make sure my three children are eating what they need to eat. So again, like know your audience, know your pain points, know what you can do to serve them before you even start pitching anything and then build stuff around it that will support your book um, and support what you're trying to grow your platform with. So, oh, I could just talk to you all day long because that's what I do, but it's usually through Messenger. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Shelly. Um, you're welcome. You any questions, I posted the link to our website. Um, you should, I think everybody's got your contact information or they can find you in this group or um, ask questions. However, you feel comfortable. Where do you want people to go if they have questions? For you? Uh, well, they can definitely ask if it's regarding publishing or book marketing or, you know, my business story. Definitely. You can ask them here. Just tag me. Um, you're more than welcome to email me at Shelly at dinner for a dollar dot co. Um, I don't, I don't really teach business or marketing or book launches or any of that. Um, so I, I probably don't have anything more to share than what I just shared. That's probably the sum of my knowledge. Um, but if you have questions about dinner for a dollar, you can email me there or you can PM me too. I, I'm, I'm on Facebook all the time. That's where I'm active. Um, and I have a very active Facebook group, dinner for a dollar. Everything's dinner for a dollar right now. So you can find me if you just type that in. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We, we went for an almost an hour and a half. So I know I'm so more than 30 minutes when it's the right thing, right? So this was wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Oh, my gosh. Wow. We, uh, <laughs> we, we covered some.